Excel's data validation tool is designed to streamline and create consistency within your worksheet's data. From setting up lists of approved values for a given column or row, to restricting numeric and date values to a specific range, you can wield a great deal of power over your worksheet's entries, which is especially handy if your worksheets are populated by other people. Starting with a column in my worksheet that would benefit from consistency, I want to restrict the values entered into the Event Type column to a handful of choices. I'm going to set up a list. So, after clicking Data Validation on the Data tab, I choose the List option from what the data validation will allow. Then, in the Source box, I type the values I want to allow anyone entering or entering data into column C, the range of cells I selected, to use. After typing the list, each item separated by a comma, I can click OK. After that, all of the cells in the range I selected in column C display a drop triangle when selected, and if one clicks on the triangle, the list of values I typed into the source box appears. Now, as far as this data validation setup is concerned, while the drop list works well as a suggestion for what to enter into the column, that's all it is. The list items are suggested values one could enter into the event type column, but there's nothing stopping you or anyone else entering any other value you might think of. With that in mind, in order to create the level of control you probably want and need, I'll go back to the data validation dialog box after selecting the original range of cells in column C. Then, I just use the fields on the input message tab and the error alert tab. These two tabs give you the ability to create a prompt when someone clicks in any cell in the validated range, advising them of the rules, and to display an error message when someone enters a value not in the established list of approved values for the range. Note that when setting the error alert, you can choose from three types of messages, information, warning, or stop. Stop is the most effective, as it won't let the user get past the cell they're in unless they choose a value from the list. Warning is a bit more tolerant, but it makes it clear that the drop list is the approved source for values in that range. Information is pretty weak, and doesn't prevent entering values not in the list at all. One thing to keep in mind about using the input message. If you type anything into that tab, whatever you type appears whenever anyone clicks in a validated cell. That can get really annoying to anyone using the worksheet, so I recommend only entering a message into the Error Alert tab, which appears only if someone attempts to make an entry that's not in the list. Other types of data validation include whole number, which forces just that, a whole number, to be entered into the selected range of cells. Used here in the budget column, it prevents anything other than that whole round number being entered, and I can choose any kind of data control, greater than, less than, equal to, or the one I'll select, between. Then I can enter the minimum and maximum values that are acceptable for the range of cells and click OK. You can do the same thing with dates and times, and again, to restrict the events to those happening only in 2022, I'll use the Between option again and set the starting and ending dates.
After setting up your validation, it's always a good idea to test them. And note that even if you didn't set up an error alert, any attempt to enter a number or date outside of the validation rule will trigger a prompt to appear. And if you regret adding a validation, just select the range, open the Data Validation dialog box, and click the Clear All button. Last, if you're using a list, as I started with for the event type cells, you can edit that source at any time, adding or removing any value, fixing a typo, whatever needs to happen to make the list appropriate. After making the change, the next time you click any drop list in that range, the edited list of values appears. And now you can see that Workshop has been added to my list of event types.